I think you're going to really like this episode. This is a really practical one. We're going to be building a email matcher to see if a string is a valid email address or not. And I know this is a practical type of program because I grabbed this code from one of my production applications. So I'm going to create a constant here called valid email regex. And I'm going to store the regular expression in here. I'm not going to type it out because that would take forever. So I copied and pasted it from my other app and we can walk through it. Now, this is not a regular expression course. Uh, there are courses with hours upon hundreds of hours of, um, uh, of content to go over every single regular expression element. My goal of this section is to walk you through and show you all of the different possibilities and things you can use regular expressions for, and then you can do what I and pretty much every other developer out there do, uh, which is to have a kind of a stored library of regular expressions. I know I have a uh, basic uh, gist that I use on GitHub where I'll go and grab uh, popular ones that I use on a regular basis. That's where I grab this one from. And uh, so uh, the biggest key is having an idea on how they work and then you can kind of customize them as you need. And I'll also show you some tools that you uh, can use to test them out. So uh, uh, the basic syntax here is we're looking for uh, any letters or numbers, anything like that. Uh, and we're looking for all of the elements before an at symbol. So an at symbol has to separate the uh, separate the words and the numbers and it also as you can see right here can include periods as well because you may have uh, a periods dashes anything like that in your uh, in your email address and then after that you have an at symbol and then you have something pretty similar right afterwards and then you have a uh, period and then you have you know dot net dot com anything like that and here at the very end uh, we made this case insensitive so at a high level this is going to look for a standard email address and now we're going to build a method and the method is going to say is valid email with the question mark and we're going to pass a argument of email and also, that's I want to show you the, uh, uh, and I don't want that autocomplete. Uh, I also want to show you the, uh, this is another syntax in Ruby for passing an argument. You don't need to place this in, uh, in parentheses. You can just pass it like this, and the parser will know what you're talking about. Now, inside the method, I'm going to use the argument. So I'm going to use email, and then I'm going to use our regular expression matcher right here, and then have this check against our valid email regex up here. Okay, and that's all we need to do. So now I'm gonna print out some uh, case examples. So I'm gonna say is valid email, and now I'll pass in a string, and I'm gonna pass in, let's go with four different examples. So say jordanhudgens.com, we're going to use a ternary operator and we're going to say that's valid or that's invalid. Okay, and then I'm going to create four different options like this. First one, I'm going to get rid of the at symbol. Second one, I'm going to make sure it can accept a dot. And in this last one, I am going to get rid of the dot com. Okay, now if we come back here, run Ruby, regular expressions, email matcher, hit return, and we have, oh, looks like we have a mistake right here. And it says warning string literal in condition. And I think this may be the issue. Let me 
fix this. Okay, now let's check it. There we go. Okay, so we have valid, invalid, valid, and invalid. So let's make sure this is all working. This is valid. This is invalid, this is valid, and this is invalid. So that's all working. Uh, just so you know what the bug was, uh, I'm pretty sure the issue is when you use a ternary operator, you have to put this in parentheses so that it kind of is it, the arguments encapsulated inside of um, it, inside this one line. We didn't have to do it up here uh, just because that's not a ternary operator. It's just an argument. So this appears to all be working. I'm going to try out one more case study that uh, I, ha I haven't tested out, so we'll see if this one works. I'm going to say Jordan underscore H and make sure that this underscore was included up in this regular expression. Oh, and this needs a dot com, or you could even go dot net, anything like that. And let's see the last one. Okay, perfect. So this is working. It's even taking underscores, See if I can switch this to a dash and it's still valid. So this is all working. So this is a uh, cool thing is, and I'll push this up to GitHub so you can have access to it. This is something that you could put right into your, uh, right into an application. So I'll, I'm, I'll also show you a good example of one that I haven't put it on. Uh, let's see, let me open up. Um, it doesn't really matter which one, I guess. I'll put this one. Okay. And this is Ruby on Rails application. And I'll open up one models. Okay. So this is a job model. And we'll just pretend that it has a... Let me see. Does it? No, it doesn't have an email address. We'll pretend like it has one. So I could say validate... And then put all this here. So I could say validate is valid email. I, in a real application, I'd probably say has valid email, something like that. And then um, you don't pass an argument to a validator in Rails. Uh, what you would do is say self dot email and then it would check against the regular expression and then it would return true or false if it returns false it's going to give a validation error to the user and say something's wrong with your email address you need to get that fixed uh that kind of thing so uh and this would still need to be fleshed out just a little bit but it from the perspective of the regular expression side of it, this is all you'd need to do. And then your Ruby on Rails application could uh, could then validate email addresses and be able to um, uh, be able to check that and give feedback to the user. So that's pretty cool. In a pretty short period of time with only a few lines of code, you can do something very complex. And uh, you may wonder kind of the purpose behind uh, your regular expressions and why you have to do things like this. Uh, and if you think about it, it's one of, even though this may look really complicated, if I were to give you a string, like an email address and all the potential different options. So all of the different options from having letters, numbers, underscores, everything like that, making sure an at symbol separated it, making sure there was a dot at some point after that, followed by other letters, but not numbers, things like, I mean, countless possibilities. If I were to tell you that I needed you to create a validator that checked against all those things, you would be writing hundreds and hundreds of lines of code to check for every single possible option and return true or not, and uh, and it, it would be take it would take forever for one thing, and it would be a really really long drawn out process. And instead, right here, we have a standard set of symbols that will check all of that. And we did all of that in terms of the checker 
on one line of code and you can see how efficient that is so regular expressions in the beginning may seem a little bit complex and you may wonder why you need to use them but it's because they are one of the best and most efficient ways of creating string matchers and validators and you know different ways of uh, of parsing values so later in the, this section we're going to get into a few different options so this is when you're looking through a string We'll go into when you may not want to use regex, you want to use a built-in Ruby method to check through an array or something like that. And in our Wheel of Fortune game, we're going to do both. We're going to create a string matcher using regex, and then uh, we're going to use some different matchers uh, using uh, the include method and or the includes method and uh, things like that. So you're going to be able to get a really well-rounded education on all the different matchers. In the next video, we're going to kind of reinforce what we learned in this video, and we're going to create an IP address matcher.